Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to explore the fundamentals of an RLC series circuit. If you are a beginner, you are in the right place. We will walk through every single detail on this diagram, explaining each concept and formula in simple, clear language, so that by the end, you will have a strong and confident understanding of how it all works. Let's begin at the very top with the title, RLC Series Circuit. This name tells us exactly what we're looking at. The letter R stands for resistor. The letter L stands for inductor. The letter C stands for capacitor. And the word series means that these three components are connected end to end, in a single, unbroken path for the electric current to flow through. Part 1, The Circuit Diagram now, let's focus on the main circuit diagram in the top left corner. This is a visual map of our circuit. First, we see a component represented by a zigzag line. This is the resistor, labeled with an R. A resistor's job is to resist the flow of current. This property is called resistance, and it's measured in a unit called ohms, which is represented by the Greek symbol omega. The voltage across the resistor is labeled as V sub R. The formula next to it, V sub R equals A times R, is Ohm's law. It means the voltage across the resistor is equal to the current, I, flowing through it, multiplied by its resistance, R. Below this, you see the words in phase. This is a critical point. In an AC circuit, in phase means that the voltage across the resistor and the current flowing through it rise and fall at the exact same time. They are perfectly synchronized. Next in line, we have a component that looks like a coil of wire. This is the inductor, labeled with an L. Its property is called inductance, which is measured in a unit called Henry's, or H. In an AC circuit, an inductor creates an opposition to the change in current, and this opposition is called inductive reactance. It's labeled as X sub L. At the top of the image, you can see the formula for it, X sub L equals omega times L. Here, omega is the angular frequency of the AC source. Just like resistance, inductive reactance is also measured in ohms. The voltage across the inductor is V sub L, which is equal to the current I multiplied by the inductive reactance X sub L. Now, look at the small diagram below the inductor. It shows that for an inductor, the voltage is leading the current. This means the voltage reaches its peak value before the current does. Specifically, it leads by 90 degrees. Imagine the current as a horizontal line, the voltage would be pointing straight up. The third and final component is the capacitor, labeled with AC. It's shown as two parallel lines. Its property is capacitance, measured in farads, or F. A capacitor also opposes the flow of alternating current, and this opposition is called capacitive reactance, labeled as X sub C. The formula for this is at the top, x sub c equals 1 divided by the quantity omega times c. Again, this is measured in ohms. The voltage across the capacitor is V sub c, which is equal to the current I multiplied by the capacitive reactance x sub c. The small diagram for the capacitor shows that the voltage is lagging the current. This is the exact opposite of the inductor. The voltage reaches its peak value after the current does. It lags by 90 degrees. If the current is a horizontal line, the capacitor's voltage points straight down. Finally, the circle with a sine wave inside is our AC voltage source. This is what powers the circuit. The equation below it, V equals V sub M times sine of omega T, describes the voltage it supplies. V is the voltage at any specific moment in time. V sub M is the maximum or peak value the voltage can reach. Omega is the angular frequency, telling us how fast the voltage alternates. T is time. Part 2, the phasor diagram adding voltages with phase. So, how do we find the total voltage in the circuit? We can't just add V sub R, V sub L, and V sub C together like simple numbers, because they are not in phase with each other. This is where the phasor diagram, shown on the right, becomes essential. A phasor is simply an arrow, or vector, where its length represents the magnitude of a value, like peak voltage, and its direction represents its phase angle. Let's build this diagram step by step. The reference, in a series circuit, the current I is the same through all components. So, we use it as our reference point, 
drawing its phaser as a horizontal arrow pointing to the right. Plotting the voltages. The resistor's voltage, V sub R, is in phase with the current, so we draw its phaser right on top of the current phaser, also pointing right. The inductor's voltage, V sub L, leads the current by 90 degrees. So, we draw its phaser pointing straight up. The capacitor's voltage, V sub C, lags the current by 90 degrees. So, we draw its phaser pointing straight down. Finding the total voltage. Notice that the V sub L phaser and the V sub C phaser are pointing in opposite directions. They are in a tug of war. To find their combined effect, we subtract the smaller one from the larger one. The diagram assumes the circuit is more inductive, meaning X sub L is greater than X sub C, which makes V sub L greater than V sub C. So, the net vertical voltage is V sub L minus V sub C, and its phaser points upwards. Now, we are left with two phasers, the horizontal V sub R, and the vertical, V sub L minus V sub C. To find the total source voltage, V sub M, we add these two phasers together using vector addition. This forms a right angle triangle, and V sub M is the hypotenuse, or the diagonal. This is our resultant voltage. The angle between the total voltage V sub M and the current I is called the phase angle, represented by the Greek letter phi, phi. This angle tells us whether the total circuit voltage leads or lags the current, and by how much. Part 3 from the voltage triangle to the impedance triangle. The right angle triangle we just formed in the phaser diagram is called the voltage triangle. Its horizontal base is V sub R. Its vertical side is V sub L minus V sub C. Its hypotenuse is the total peak voltage, V sub M. Now, let's follow the instruction on the page, divide all quantities by I. Specifically, we will divide the peak voltage of each side by the peak current, I sub M. When we take V sub R and divide it by I sub M, we get the resistance, R. When we take V sub L and divide it by I sub M, we get the inductive reactance, X sub L. When we take V sub C and divide it by I sub M, we get the capacitive reactance, X sub C. And most importantly, when we take the total voltage, V sub M, and divide it by the total current, I sub M, we get the total opposition to current in the entire AC circuit. This total opposition is called impedance, and it is represented by the letter Z and impedance is also measured in ohms. By doing this division, we have transformed our voltage triangle into a new, but similar, triangle called the impedance triangle. Its horizontal base is now the resistance, R. Its vertical side is the net reactance, which is X sub L minus X sub C. Its hypotenuse is the total impedance, Z. The angle is still our phase angle, phi, phi. Part 4, the power of the impedance triangle. This impedance triangle is incredibly powerful because it allows us to use simple trigonometry to find the key properties of our circuit. You might remember the mnemonic SOHCAHTOA. Sine of phi is opposite over hypotenuse. Looking at our triangle, this means sine of phi equals the quantity x sub L minus x sub C divided by Z. Cosine of phi is adjacent over hypotenuse. This gives you S. Cosine of phi equals or divided by Z. This value is also known as the power factor of the circuit. Tangent of phi is opposite over adjacent. This gives you S. Tangent of phi equals the quantity, X sub L minus X sub C, divided by R. This is often the easiest way to calculate the phase angle itself. We can also apply the Pythagorean theorem, which states that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. For our impedance triangle, this means Z squared equals or squared plus the quantity, X sub L minus X sub C, squared. To get the final formula for impedance, we just take the square root of both sides. This gives us the most important equation in the box. Z equals the square root of the entire quantity of R squared plus, in parentheses, X sub L minus X sub C, all squared. Part 5, Summary of Key Formulas Let's quickly review the final box formulas at the bottom of the page. Z equals V sub M divided by I sub M. This is Ohm's law for the entire AC circuit. Total impedance equals peak voltage divided by peak current. 
V equals V sub M times sine of omega T. This is our input voltage from the source, a sine wave that varies with time. The arrow points out that T is time in seconds. I equals A sub M times sine of, in parentheses, omega T plus or minus phi. This is the equation for the current. It has the same frequency as the voltage, but it is shifted by the phase angle, phi. The arrow points out that phi is the phase angle. We use a minus sign if the current lags the voltage, an inductive circuit, and a plus sign if the current leads the voltage, a capacitive circuit. Omega equals 2 times pi times f. This final formula shows the relationship between angular frequency, omega, measured in radians per second, and the standard frequency, f, measured in hertz. And there you have it. We have journeyed from a simple circuit diagram, through the concepts of phase and phasers, to derive the impedance triangle and the key formulas that govern an RLC series circuit. I hope this detailed, step-by-step -step explanation has made these concepts clear and easy to understand.